Somebody got some lovely birds in the background. Nice. Right. I think we'll wait another two minutes and then we'll start. Mm -hmm. People are coming in. Nice, good. Okay, I see that the, the rush of uh, signing in is over, so I think maybe a few more will join, but uh, I think we can start. Welcome, everybody. It's a bit of uh, a strange uh, virtual meeting, uh, but it's very nice to see that so many people uh, have shown up. It's already uh, 36 now, I think few more will join, so maybe we reach 40 or even more. It's very nice. Um, tonight, it's uh, all around Einstein. Uh, let me just quickly go through a few things. And I'll share my screen, see if that works. There we go. Well, the Einstein first uh, virtual session. And this is the agenda for tonight. So we will not keep, I'll try to make it not too long because we don't have uh, the drinks that we normally have and the food. Um, so we'll make a little intro, what I'm doing right now, 15 minutes more or less, then. After that, Jury Janssens will uh, give an overview of the Einstein platform uh, more in general. Uh, and then after that, uh, more deep dive session on Einstein analytics specifically, but then really the basics and how to get started with that. And Steven Vivo will do that. And then afterwards, if all technical issues get solved by then, uh, we'll do a little quiz. Of, uh, yeah, that will take around 15 minutes, I think. So we should be able to finish within one and a half hours. Let's try to stick to that. Um, this was the intro. Now a little announcement, a little one, but a very important one. I'm happy to announce that um, we have broadened our um, co-leadership of this user group. So until now it was Samuel, Jan, and I was the latest joiner. Um, but we've seen that in, in, uh, in the Netherlands, in the Amsterdam user group, where the user group is uh, very well organized and has a huge turn up, uh, and also the, the sessions are very well organized, uh, there they have a lot of uh, co-leaders, and we thought we learned from that and we'll invite uh, one co-leader more. And so I'm happy to announce that uh, some has actually accepted our question, whether he uh, would join as poll leader. So voila, um, the onboarding is ongoing, but I think by next session, uh, he will be officially uh, co leader of this user group. So Sam, I would suggest if you can uh, introduce yourself shortly. Yeah, 
Uh, thank you for the invitation to become a co-leader for the administrator user group. Um, I think I came in touch with Salesforce uh, in 2017 and uh, I think my first administrator user group was um, a review on uh, Dreamforce at that time, me not knowing at all what Dreamforce even was. Um, but still attending uh, with, uh, I think, some people that are here in the, in the session as well, like Iago and uh, Robin Wijnen and so on. Um, and um, yeah, proud to be a part of this story and uh, will try to help the, the community group uh, to grow even further. Well, thank you very much. And we're looking forward to, uh, to your help in the, in the user group. For sure. Um, and normally there's a big round of applause, but okay, uh, it's a virtual session. It's a bit harder. I'll, I'll do the applause. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Um, Thank you. Just a short uh, thing. Yeah, it's the first time that we actually do a virtual session. So just a few um, rules of conduct. So the full name. I think you all did that more or less. So sign in with the full name. It's it's a lot handier than uh, if we do a chat afterwards. Uh, if during the presentations you would have a question, please put it in the chat. We will uh, monitor the questions. And we will once in a while um, answer the questions or try to get them answered um, or do them in the QA uh, afterwards. Uh, and then please, during the session, uh, mute yourself. And as I don't hear anything, I think everybody did that. So great. Uh, and it would be nice if you put on your video, um, your camera, but we'll see how it works if, if that gets uh, too crowded or, or we get uh, screwed by that, then maybe you can turn it off. But if, if possible, please put it on. It feels a little bit more like a real session then. Uh, we've also uh, prepared a little uh, poll, so just to get to know the audience a bit. Uh, and if all goes well, we will be able to start that. But then I have to turn off my uh, sc screen share, I think. Yes. I'll stop sharing and we'll launch a little poll. If you could all just fill that in uh, and then, uh, yeah. We'll give that uh, five minutes or so, a few questions around yourself just to, for us to get to know you. Do you all see, oh no, I have to push the button of course. Do you see a pop-up with some questions or one question at a time? Yes, we can see it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's let's take uh, five minutes or so. I see answers coming in. Yeah, completion is growing. Already four people, five. 20% of the audience has already voted. Nothing to win with this one. Eh? Just a uh, yeah, spoiler. But, uh, 40, that's going quickly. Three minutes and we're already at 85%, good. It's a lovely audience. Oh, 
It's almost one finished. Last, yeah. One last person. Well, I would say that that person uh, answered the last question uh, at ease, but I would suggest that we uh, already start with the, with the first part, um, which is an overview of the Einstein platform. Uh, for that, I will leave the word to Jürgen. Okay. Oops, share a screen. Do you all see my screen? Yes. Yes, we do. Yep. Okay. Yes. Well, good evening, everyone. Well, while uh, today in the uh, in the virtual session, the, the welcome poll is almost complete. Let's start with a quick intro uh, on, on Einstein. Like an intro on the Einstein landscape, uh, I mean, on the platform and what's beyond uh, the, the platform. And then we'll uh, hand over the, the mic on the Einstein analytics uh, part. Well, Einstein, we'll see what people answer in the poll, uh, but I'm sure if we would uh, talk with each uh, of you, well, for some, Einstein is all about analytics, about uh, crunching uh, data. For other people, when you would ask them, what is Einstein about? They would say, okay, it's something very complicated. Uh, something where you need really uh, very advanced uh, technical skills, whether it's machine learning or uh, other skills. Uh, and I'm sure that if I ask the question to every one of you, each of, of you will say, well, it's all about the little guy. It's all about cool stuff. But I think the, the reality is a bit a mix of the, of the three, uh, actually. Uh, and the, the introduction on the Einstein landscape. Well, when Salesforce uh, launched Einstein in the, in the beginning, well, obviously uh, they had to make uh, a choice where they would start with. There were no um, AI uh, experts at, uh, at Salesforce. It was at least not their core competency. So that uh, to start uh, with choosing what data to French for first uh, for the, the Einstein for the AI part. Uh, as you see here on the on the little board, they could have focused on many things. Uh, they started with some of them, uh, and as you will see later on uh, with all the different Einstein products, some are really AI, others are less about AI, but fit in the the larger uh, Einstein family. Tonight, we're not going to debate, uh, at least not during the session, maybe after it. We're not going to debate whether a certain Einstein product is really all about AI or not. They are in the Einstein family uh, period. Uh, what we'll go through is what choices have been made uh, so far. So in the beginning, obviously, to gear up quickly, uh, Salesforce started with focusing on structured uh, data. Why? Because it's uh, by far the easiest and obviously they have uh, tons of experience and lots of uh, data uh, at hand. So they started with a structured date and gradually they geared up, they leveled up step by uh, step. And uh, now they're really focusing uh, with Einstein on the AI as a platform uh, service. Admittedly, we can debate again uh, on the level of each of the, the products. But it's really something very important to understand for the Einstein platform is that actually the idea is that the platform does a lot uh, for you. So it's all about hosted infrastructure built for Salesforce and indeed more and more now also for in, uh, taking into account feedback and insights coming from uh, Salesforce. When a couple of years ago, uh, Salesforce bought an AI company that really gave a boost, not only about their skills, but also for their internal capabilities, uh, their internal dynamic. So right now, uh, the Einstein is really a, 
a big part of the Salesforce uh, ecosystem and they develop their own uh, skills and expertise uh, internally. So in a nutshell, Einstein at Salesforce is really about everything that AI could bring to, to a CRM at large, integrated in the, the platform and well, obviously focusing on the, the trusted part of things. Now, what does that mean concretely? There are a lot of products in the, the Einstein family. Uh, I will go through some of them, not all of them. Uh, I could talk during hours about each of them, in fact. But to have a quick overview, uh, you have on the one hand, you have well the Einstein analytics part, and then what is called the Einstein platform. Einstein platform is mainly organized around the four products that you see here. Ancient Prediction Builder, Next Best Action, Vision and Language, and then there are a lot of other products that more or less fit in the, um, in the picture too. Ancient Prediction Builder, and again, we can co uh, come back to questions uh, afterwards. Ancient Prediction Builder is more or less what the, uh, what's in the name. It is a product uh, to build predictions. Uh, how does it work? Well, uh, it evaluates the, the answer on uh, binary questions. Well, now it's evolving. You also have uh, since uh, last release uh, numeric uh, predictions. But basically, uh, if we take an example, it can give the likelihood of a yes or a likelihood of a no for a yes or no question to stick to the easy uh, cases. For, an, for instance, will a customer miss a payment or the attrition or um, the well, flights arriving on time or deliveries uh, arriving uh, on time? There is a capability in Einstein to make predictions. What do you do? Well, obviously, uh, you need to train it. How do you do that? You define the, the field uh, and the objects uh, where you want to have predictions uh, on. So you define the, the field. Then you launch the prediction builder uh, that goes on its own, takes uh, some time, and then you get the results. That's the, the second screen where basically the predictions that prediction builder does are evaluated. If it's too low, well, obviously it's, uh, it's too low, it's crappy. Uh, so you need more qualitative uh, data to come with predictions. There is also an indication if really the prediction is at 99% sure or 100% sure, then statistically there must be something wrong. And that explains why in the, in the dashboard that Prediction Builder shows you, it gives you an indication to what extent uh, it's expected that the prediction is good. So. You build the prediction, you integrate it in your uh, screen layout, and basically uh, on contacts, on leads, on uh, opportunities, you can put uh, a certain uh, e evaluation, for instance, well, uh, likelihood of attrition as in the, the screen, which is information that you can then uh, take into account in the decision-taking uh, process towards uh, the customers. Uh, you can also use that information as uh, a starting point for decision trees, etc. So Prediction Builder, it's all about building predictions, a percentage of likelihood of a yes or no, or some more elaborate cases too. Uh, that comes out without having uh, to do much. You have to define what you want to predict. Obviously, you need uh, to train it on positive and negative cases and then uh, launch it. But that's it about uh, it. Uh, and under certain uh, circumstances, um, there is now the possibility to do a free prediction uh, in your org. That's uh, new since the last release too. So prediction builder, making predictions on a certain uh, field. And the next best action, again, it's all in the name. It helps you define the next best action to take or to propose to a customer. 
Well, my, my friends and colleagues know that for me, next best action is not the really the AI functionality of Einstein, but it functions really well. Basically, you build a decision tree um, to define what would be the next best action to take depending on a certain criteria. Where it becomes interesting if uh, you combine prediction builder with next best action, why? Well, that's what you see basically on the right uh, of the screen, the print screen, is that if you see that a certain customer has a very high percentage of uh, taking a specific step, while you launch an action to convince him to do something or not to do something, uh, the same is, uh, can be true for very bad ones with a very low percentage, and you can go really far. I mean, the richer the tree you, you build, the more precise you can be with the, the next best actions that you want to propose to your sales, to your service uh, team. Um, yeah, that's it. So prediction builder, next best action. Next best action, quite uh, easy. It's uh, building decision trees and integrate them uh, again in your uh, screen layout. And where it becomes strong is if you combine prediction builder and next best action. In the platform, you have also uh, products related to vision and then also language, where we'll come in a, in a second. Einstein vision is, in the meantime, something uh, really, really big uh, within the Einstein uh, portfolio, its own lab, uh, its own teams. And so the Einstein vision part is becoming really, really cool and a really uh, good product. Basically, well, how does it work? It's rather simple. It's all about, yeah, uh, quite intuitive, creating a data set, training the model, and then uh, once the model is trained, launching it uh, on uh, new predictions. You upload an image, you receive the prediction, and then it's up to you, obviously, to integrate something with the outcome of the, the prediction. Um, so there is always some configuration to do some APIs to, to set up, uh, et cetera, with the outcome of the, the prediction. But whether it's about object detection or image classification, uh, Einstein vision works really well. Uh, and it's really based on the platform. There it's really AI as a service where uh, you connect to the, to the vision platform, you load your data, you, uh, you train them, and then it's ready to go. Uh, typically for vision, uh, if you have yeah, 200 to 1,000 images, uh, the training goes really well and predictions are quite uh, accurate, well based also on the quality of your images, obviously. So that's object detection and image classification, typically example, well, what do you see on the picture? Is it about, do you see mountains? Do you see a beach? Um, Einstein uh, vision, well, if with a specific uh, training set, would predict with a very high likelihood that this is an image about uh, beaches. Obviously, well, the tool helps, but common sense also for using Einstein vision helps. If you only show uh, beaches with nothing uh, on the sand uh, and only uh, mountains uh, with nothing on, obviously it will become really good uh, to recognize the easy cases, but not with the complicated cases. So you just have to well, increase the richness of the data that you feed Einstein vision with. Uh, so very, very cool product um, used in many, many countries uh, in the meantime. In South Africa, for instance, there is a company that uh, uses Einstein Vision and uh, also Einstein Analytics combined. Uh, so there, it's a company that sells uh, scrapped cars. So they receive pictures of cars, they evaluate the percentage of well, if it's an interesting product for them or not, and then they, uh, well, they buy it or they ship uh, those cars, and then uh, with the analytics part that uh, will be explained later on, 
well, they make the best predictions to see where it's, it would be good to sell those products. So again, it's, it's in combination with different uh, products that you can uh, do really uh, nice stuff. So ancient vision by far my favorite. Um, ancient language, a rather classical approach uh, to first you train. Uh, so you train them either on a certain intent, what do you want to, to do, uh, buying a product, shipping, billing. You define the classes, uh, you gather those data, you train the model, and then afterwards it's uh, doing a test and doing something with the outcome uh, of uh, a sentiment analysis or uh, intent analysis. Uh, in certain tools, uh, like in uh, Marketing Cloud, there are, there are easy ways to uh, get that uh, faster because it's part of the, the business reality. But for organizations where it wouldn't be part of the uh, reality, going through the Einstein language uh, product can be uh, rather interesting. And there are also it's a matter of of, uh, of keywords. It's so that, that's about it for the platform part. Prediction builder next best action. Vision, which is really uh, AI as a service language, more or less uh, two. And then you have a couple of other products and it's even at the complete list yet. Analytics uh, and discovery, which are a bit related. Well, discovery will, go, will not go in detail today, um, but it allows to crunch data uh, or even more than analytics. Uh, Einstein OCR, it's really about OCR. So uh, doing something with a picture of a text uh, on the print screen, you, you see a, a tag. Well, based on a picture of a tag, uh, Einstein OCR, which is still in ramp up, uh, but Einstein OCR can really uh, analyze the, the data and translate it in data. And once you have this data, you put them in the, the good fields, et cetera, et cetera. So that's Einstein OCR. Einstein voice, it's probably the, the eldest. Um, it's typical use case for, well, sales people that want to speak to their phone rather than uh, doing the administration once they're back. Well, in case sales people are allowed to talk to their phone when they're uh, driving, which is not the case for all organizations. Well, Einstein voice uh, works rather well. Uh, basically, you need to define the the screens, uh, the, the fields, sorry, need to define the fields uh, where information needs to be logged. So salespeople, for instance, can uh, say information and Einstein Voice will uh, take it into account. A uh, function that uh, is also included in Einstein Voice is that Einstein Voice reads your uh, agenda for you. So now it's nice with extra to convince your salesman. So that's about um, voice, well, recommendations, search, about translation, again, we talk uh, during a long time about the different products. Um, it's all about, some work really well. Einstein bots, it's, um, it's a lot of work, uh, but it's a fun tool. Einstein search, uh, it's all about increasing the usability of the, uh, the search and making it easier to, sue and to, to use the, the search uh, functionality of Salesforce. And Einstein recommendations, again, it's already included in some products, for instance, uh, in the marketing cloud ecosystem, it's already used quite a lot. So that's that about it. Uh, used to be a, supposed to be a short introduction on the entire landscape, what's platform, what's more. Uh, and now, Let's go to the main. There's a question. Yes, tell me. Uh, it's from Sam, but I don't know uh, if he's still there. But um, he's asking, when working with a fairly new customer that doesn't have a lot of data built up yet over time, Einstein might not work sometimes. Do you have a strategy recommendation on this? And how could we communicate this to them rather than saying you'll have to wait two years before you can use it? <laughs> Um, that's a very long and very clear question at the, the same time. 
Well, data depends what data we're talking about. I assume we're not talking about uh, ancient vision data, so not visual uh, data, but uh, the more the, the classical crunching data. Uh, you need to do two things, manage the expectations. So you will have to say that they will have to wait a period of time to have the, the big thing. Uh, but the good news is that, and that's the second advice I would have, is that you can start with small uh, use cases. Uh, you need data anyhow. You don't need to wait two years uh, to do good uh, predictions, but you do need data. So what I would advise is start with small use cases uh, where you have some data uh, about, or small use cases where the, the cycle is much shorter. Depends what you want to predict, uh, basically. Uh, for certain data, you don't uh, need uh, many cycles. For others, it's more relevant to wait an entire business cycle. So in a nutshell, start with small use cases uh, to develop awareness and skills inside the, the company at the customer, uh, because they too will have to develop uh, a bit of skills uh, and all, and especially the good way of thinking about uh, AI. And that's the case with whether it's normal uh, predictions, whether it's vision, whether it's analytics, it's all so about having realistic uh, expectations. So I would just go for it, small use cases and coaching them to grow their uh, right mindset. But if Sam has some more questions, well, you can send them afterwards with pleasure. Are there other questions before I pass the mic? There over? was another from Kyle, but I think is that is was the ans that answer okay, Kyle? Yes, sure, Steve. Go ahead. Was that was that answer okay, or because you had a yes, similar sure. question? I think, yeah. Yes, I had a small follow-up uh, question with regard to the actual amount of data, uh, but of course this will this will depend on the customer-to-customer -customer, uh, base. Uh, but it's really something we are getting uh, back a lot. That in terms of cases, for example, uh, once you have the critical amount uh, of case records, for example, to go into a, a certain prediction, you really are a long way down the road, uh, especially in a country as Belgium where there's just not as much data. Um, but I think it's a lot difficult. Do you know what the minimum is? Because I think for prediction builder, isn't it 400 records? Is it? Is that, I don't Only know. 400? Okay. Could, could be more, but... Yeah, for pr well, prediction builder, it typically it's advised to have uh, about so uh, 500 records, whether it's yeah. four or 500 is, uh, well, is, is a detail, uh, oh, I would okay. say. But then again, for prediction builder, that's a typical uh, volume uh, thing. Now you need to, if you really go for prediction builder for easy cases, so the yes, no questions, where you want to get to a percentage likelihood, don't forget that you need to have positive cases and negative cases to, to train a bit uh, on. If for instance, to take an easy example, if you want to predict uh, the likelihood that someone will pay late and most of your customers will always pay in time, there is no way of, uh, of training your data to predict uh, the likelihood that someone will pay late. That's the, that's the common sense part I talked about. Your data need to be a bit relevant to no matter if you're at those four or five hundred uh, or not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the, the the minimum amount of data is much lower than I expected. Uh, five hundred is indeed uh, yeah fairly easy. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, if there are some more questions, you can send them afterwards. I will pass the mic. Back, um, Mike, do you want to go to the poll or do we immediately go to Steven? I think we go immediately to Steven. Thank you very much, Steven. 
Um, yeah, as said, I, if there are questions, put them in the chat or uh, or on mail afterwards. Um, and now, Stephen will give us a more deep dive introduction to Einstein analytics. Uh, floor is yeah. yours. You can see my presentation, right? Yes. Yes, okay. okay. So, hello. Uh, introduction to Einstein Analytics. My name is Steven. Uh, I'm a Salesforce lead developer at PwC. Um, I need to have my notes because I need to know, be able to read what I did the last 13 years. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, previous. So I've been working for uh, previously OPSI, but now PwC for 13 years. I first started as a .NET developer. Um, then I moved to uh, Salesforce development. Um, I did that for four years. Uh, did a lot of custom development, lightning components, mobile SDK. And then I switched to product development uh, for our uh, Converse uh, op. And then uh, recently I just uh, moved away from product development again and I'm just now a regular developer, solution architect uh, and consultant. Um, I have a website, I will post the slides on it uh, after the meeting. So, uh, and, I'll, and I will also post it on LinkedIn. Okay, so Einstein Analytics, Salesforce says, Einstein Analytics allows you to explore all of your data quickly and easily by providing AI powered advanced analytics right in Salesforce. Um, so why did I put it here? Because this is marketing. Um, the last part for me is really important because right in Salesforce, and I will show you at the end, that's actually very true. Uh, this is very well integrated in Salesforce, which is uh, a difference with other BI tools uh, available. Um, the agenda for today, so I will start with what is Einstein Analytics? Um, then I will go on uh, and I put this slide tw twice because I didn't know where to put it. Uh, so I put it at the beginning and then I'll repeat it at the end. So you don't forget. Um, Einstein, the difference between Einstein analytics and the reports and dashboards. Um, I will then give you an overview of the platform. I will talk about optimization with data sync. I will give you a demo. Uh, again, the reports versus uh, EA. Uh, and then I will give you some uh, links uh, where you can find a lot of information uh, on how to start your journey with Einstein Analytics. Um, but first, what is Einstein Analytics? For me, this is Einstein Analytics. Um, it's actually all about these um, words. Uh, it's about dashboard, data sinks, data flows, lenses, recipes, data sets, and data set builder. And I will explain all of them today. Um, the difference between Einstein analytics and reports and dashboard, I thought it was very important that I uh, put this here because, um, yeah, it's a, it's, I think it's going to be a question that your customers will, will ask you, um, uh, before you, well, before you even start. So, um, reports and dashboards, uh, I found it on a website from, uh, the, the Einstein analytics expert that I learned from, which is uh, Rike Hofgaard. Um, she has a website, Salesforce blogger, and she describes uh, reports and dashboard as best for static and operational reports on low data volumes. So I try to, to look up the, um, the amount of records you can, you, can, you can have in a report, but I couldn't find it, the max, I mean. Huh? Um, but if you see at the, at, the, at the left column, Einstein Analytics is actually made to explore high data volumes between 25 million and 10 billion records. So I think we can all agree that yeah, reports and dashboard does not handle that kind of volume. Um, why is it 25 to 10 billion? Um, because you have different licenses. So uh, if we look at the, the license that is all in, uh, and I have it uh, here written down, uh, it's actually the, the Einstein Analytics Plus license. Um, the other license is called Einstein Analytics Growth. Um, people will ask, what's the cost? So I put it there. Uh, the Einstein Analytics Plus, so everything included is 150 uh, per user per month. Uh, and it gives you up to 10 billion row storage limits. 
So you can handle 10 billion rows. Uh, it includes the discovery and the prediction builder. Um, so it includes everything. Um, the other license is the Einstein Analytic Growth license, which is 125 per user per month. Uh, but that can only uh, manage up to 100 million rows. And very important, you do not have discovery or prediction builder. You also have some other license, which is called Sales and Service Analytics. Um, I only found out about it when I was preparing the slide deck, uh, but I think this is a very basic uh, license to just have some dashboards uh, in, in a sales uh, up or a service up, and that's up to 25 million. That's why I say 25 to 10 billion. Uh, what you can do is you can buy additional uh, rows. So even if you have a uh, Einstein Index Plus license and you can go up to 100 billion, you can uh, buy additional packages of 100 million uh, rows. So that's about the money. Um, the next part is that um, in reports and dashboards, um, we can show external data. So if we use Lightning Connect, uh, you can show external data. You can, you can link it through SharePoint and you can pull all that data uh, in Salesforce and then you can report on it. Uh, what are uh, the downside of this is that um, this will require uh, Lightning Connect uh, connectors, um, and um, you will be um, how do you say this in English? You you are dependent on the speed of the SharePoint. Um, so while this works very nice in reports and dashboards, and you can do a lot. Of, uh, of that with reports and dashboard. In Einstein Analytics, you can basically access all your external data and uh, yeah, it's built for that uh, and it can handle a lot of loads. Uh, and all your data is also on the Einstein Analytics platform. It's not uh, linked. So the next thing is that, um, yeah, the UI of reports and dashboard, I call it solid. I put in brackets limited UI. So it's basic dashboards. You do not have filters. Um, and I mean, you do not have filters when you're running the report. You, of course, have, have filters when you're editing a report. Um, but you also have limited chart options. Um, while you will see in the demo that uh, Einstein Analytics has a modern style UI, it's also really 360 degrees. Uh, you have dynamic dashboards, customizable widgets, filters, heat maps. Uh, so you basically have a very modern UI. The reports and dashboards, again, it, you probably can do some reports in a Salesforce One app, um, but it's nowhere near what Einstein Analytics, uh, the mobile app can do, because they have a separate mobile app for that. So uh, picture that you, you can tell your boss that, um, or your customers that they can be in an elevator and uh, next to someone and then just show some nice looking charts on their phone. Um, which is going to be way better than the Salesforce one up uh, the reports. Um, also, another limit, which is very important, is um, while this limit of max four levels in a report type is 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 pretty okay. If you want to do complex stuff, you you can't. You you are you are going to be limited. Uh, you will see in the data flow that you can have multiple uh, objects, and you do not actually have a limit. Um, as long as you, yeah, you don't have a limit. Um, I also found, and uh, I already said that, but reports and dashboards for me is operational reporting and a standalone dashboard. Um, while for me, Einstein Analytics, and I really like this term, decision-making dashboards, that's pretty cool. And it's, yeah, it looks cool as well for me. Uh, reports and dashboard is a tool and Einstein Analytics is a platform. If there are questions, let me know. No, it's all fine. Okay. So what is Einstein Analytics? You already saw this slide. So these um, ter terms. Um, so first, first of all, a data set. So I'm just going to read it because it's a very good definition. Data set is a data repository similar to file system storage, but with its own format and algorithms flattening the data with inverted indexes for volume and speed. That's important. So 
you can see here in the image, you have a data set, the blue one, the text number and dates. Um, that's the three data types. But what this data set actually is, is it's a flattened index which, uh, of a key value pair structure. So it's a file. Uh, the data sets are files, it's not tables. Well, um, the traditional tables you all know, of course. So what we're doing is we're converting the tables into a, a flattened index key value pair. Um, so remember that that's a data set. Uh, and of course, this is uh, for performance. Um, the data set builder. So the data set builder is the simplest way to create a data set based on objects from, from salesforce.org. You will see that there are multiple um, sources from, uh, from data and one of them is Salesforce data. Um, the data set builder is like an easy way to um, build the data flow. Um, you do this by, yeah, it says here, create data set, select Salesforce. Um, yes, and um, the data flow run will actually create the data set. Um, but you will see this later, I will show you. Uh, then important, the data flow. That's more important actually. So a data flow is, um, a data flow is a process using instructions for creating a data set plus some transformation as the data is being read and moved around. So basically, when you build a data set using the data set builder, um, the one we previous saw, uh, the instructions get automatically added to the data flow in a format describing the object field and transformations. I will show you a complete data flow and how you, who, you, how you, how it's built. Um, but here on the right, you can already see it. Um, the data, um, the, wait, because the data set builder is creating the data flow for you while you could also create the data flow completely yourself. Um, when the data flow runs, the data engine executes all the instructions in the file. So what you said it, it needs to do, and you will create a final uh, result data set. Um, yeah, you can uh, either uh, run a data uh, flow right now, or you can schedule it to run every week, every day, every couple of hours. And it's up to you. You could also uh, download those files, the, those data flows, because uh, you can download them as JSON files and then you can back them up in Git or uh, somewhere where you, where you want. Uh, and you can upload them again. Uh, okay, that's a data flow. Um, Recipes. So it's important, uh, the difference between the data flow and the recipes. So recipes are used uh, to prepare and clean data or to combine multiple data sets into one. It's very important a recipe always starts with a data set while a data flow starts with just data from CSV, Salesforce, or I don't know what. A recipe always starts with, uh, from a data set. Um, they call it the friendly data analyst UI. So it's if you want to do something quickly, uh, uh, do it with this. Um, everything you do in a recipe, you can easily, no, not easily maybe, but you can do more advanced in the data flow. So uh, if you want to have performance, I would use the data flow. If you do want to do something quick, use a recipe. Uh, but I, I'm gonna show you later. Quickly uh, about Lens and Explorer. Uh, that's a little bit diff uh, difficult, I think, but uh, I will try. So a lens is a view into a data set used to get insight to a specific business questions. question. Uh, you can save the lens and you can share it um, and you can clip it to a dashboard. I will show you later. Uh, it has three, the lens has three modes. It has a chart mode, a table mode, and a cycle mode. And actually, uh, right now they renamed Sackel every uh, every every everywhere where they have Sackel, they renamed it to Craig to make it uh, more difficult. Um, and in a lens, you can also edit data fields. But remember, uh, a lens uh, um, is used to explore data in the Explorer. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Uh, a dashboard, that's the easy one. So a dashboard is a set of charts and metrics and tables based on the data in one or more lenses. Uh, you can have pages in the dashboards. Uh, you can have interactive widgets. You can have global filters and you uh, can have unique dashboard layouts for all your devices. So if you have the mobile analytics app uh, installed on your phone, you could see a different layout um, while well, it's the same dashboard uh, than you see on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a PC or on a, on a tablet. The overview. So first of all, um, you have three ways of, 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 of inputting data. So uh, the first thing is of course Salesforce. Um, the second is a manual, just a CSV file. Um, and then the third one is external data with connectors. Um, all of those result in a data set. Um, you can have multiple data sets like you see here. I have twice, uh, I have one data set accounts A and I have another accounts B. That's per perfectly fine. For instance, uh, security, uh, I don't want uh, a user to access a certain field. Uh, I don't include it in this data set. I only include it in this data set. That's one use case, for instance. Uh, I have other data sets, contacts. Uh, I combined account and contact here. I have a leads, I have contacts, manual data, external data, all, all of my data sets. All of those data sets are explored by lenses. So you create a lens to explore that data. From the lens, you clip it to the dashboard. That's basically it. Um, additionally to that, you also have, uh, you also have the data sync. Um, so uh, I don't know how they called it in the, in the past, but it doesn't matter. They enabled it by default since the winter 20. Um, and this is actually pretty cool because it's, it enhances performance. So what, what, what does it do? Um, I will try to move this bar. Um, what does it do? Um, I have here two data set, accounts A and accounts B. Um, I didn't say it, but account A has, for instance, 10 fields, and this accounts B has 10 other fields. Um, what will the data sync do? He will create in, I don't know where he does it, but in memory or something, uh, he creates his own data set and he merges those two fields and he puts them together in a data set. So what he then will do is he will uh, sync the data uh, on, a, on a shuttle that you, that you um, uh, specified, for instance, every week or every day, and he will uh, update this data set. And then this data set gets feed by this data set. So this is way more optimized than what you, when you don't do it with data sync, because if you don't do it with uh, data sync, uh, yeah, you just keep on querying Salesforce or external data or, so that's not optimal. Um, that's data sync, but it's enabled by default. So probably you, you don't have to look at it. Uh, um, okay. The connectors, I have to be honest, I have never connected any data before. So I haven't used any of these, those connectors just because I don't need to. Uh, yeah, you can use Salesforce external, um, Salesforce CSVs. Um, but yeah, as far as I know, all the big ones are there. Um, so I'm not going to stand uh, still for a long time at this. Um, I will go to the demo and then I have to exit. And I have to, okay. So first, I need to refresh to see I'm still logged in. Okay, so when you open Salesforce, you have the app launcher here. I have Analytics Studio here. Uh, important to know if you just register, uh, register for a new Salesforce developer org, um, you won't get analytics. You need to go to, to uh, and I will show, give you the links to the, the trailheads at the end. You need to go to an analytics trailhead and most of the time in the beginning, they will give you first step. Uh, here's the link to, to create a, an Einstein analytics developer org. Um, so that's important. Um, this is Einstein analytics. Um, when you want to, so this is a homepage. You can see all the things that I already did. Um, when you want to see what, 
what is all available in Einstein in studio, um, you will see that um, that you have uh, you can click all items here. So what I what do I see here? I see all my apps, dashboards, lenses, and uh, data sets. You can have favorites. Um, you can have shared. Uh, that does not important. Um, but first, before I go into this. Um, here, hidden, you also have the data manager. This is another tab where you can handle everything uh, data related. Uh, we'll first dive into this. Um, so uh, you have a couple of links here. The first one is data. This is the tab where you see all your data sets. What can you do with this? Uh, you can rename, you can edit the data sets. You can see in which dashboards it's used, in which lenses. You can, this is a cool one, you can replace data. So uh, I, I uploaded uh, a couple of CSVs for this demo. If I want to replace data, I can just give it a new CSV and it uploads my data. So that's pretty cool. Um, and that's about it, what you can do with data sets here. Um, data flows. Yeah, data flows. Uh, so this is the most important, and I think, yeah, I think this is the most difficult part of, of Einstein analytics. Um, let's just dive into one. This is a default Salesforce uh, flow. Um, how does this work? Uh, so you have to see it from left to right. So it starts here and then it goes all the way to here where it uh, uh, creates a data set. So the first steps are extracting users. So we use an SFDC digest for this. Um, the SFDC digest is able to um, download or extract uh, data from Salesforce, from a custom object or an, an object. Um, what do you do? You specify the, the object here. Oh. You specify the object here, you give it a name. You say, which field do you want? And then you can see already that here, those are the fields that are going to be extracted. You do the same for an account. Uh, you give it a name, you, you say account object, and I want those fields. You can see that those fields are going to be extracted. What does it do then? Um, you need to have an augment uh, transformation. So when you start an augment, it's going to actually just basically do a join between those the users and the accounts. Um, so the left source will be the, all the accounts and the right source will be the users. The, he will be able to do join them by a left and a right key, which will be owner ID on the accounts and the ID on the users. What you also need to specify and also know is that uh, in, a, in an argument, he always takes all the fields from the left source but he only takes the specified fields from the right source. So what did I do here? I specified only take name and username from the user extract. If you then go to output fields, you will see that those are all the fields from account, which I didn't specify. And then these are the users which I did specify. This will be the result of uh, the augment transformation. And then it goes on and on. So, what do we do next? Uh, here we extract all the opportunities with an uh, SFDC digest. Uh, and again, we do an augment, same thing, just with a key, we, uh, we join them. Uh, we, join, uh, we join again. Um, and then already here, we uh, do an SFDC register. What is an SFD register? It's actually creating a data set. So um, here, uh, these output fields will result in a data set. You see, we give it a name, it's the source. Yes. So there is a question from Sam, who yeah. asked uh, that it basically is a left join all the time. And what if you would require another type of join? Uh, I guess I don't have it here, but I guess it will, uh, will exist. But what do you, uh, another join? Um, Actually, I don't know. I think it's only left join. No but it, I don't know if you, if, I don't know if you need to call it left join because it's just using two sources. Uh, yeah. 
It's probably a left join. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Okay, so uh, the register is going to create a data set. So um, this one is going to spit out an opportunities data set with those fields. This is to see that in a data flow, you can create multiple data sets. So you see that here, it also spits out a, a, a data set, which is going to be called product opportunities. So running one data flow can give you multiple data sets. Uh, this is all join argument arguments. I will just go uh, see that I don't forget something. Um, Okay, so then I'm going, going to see another data flow. This is another data flow where uh, they do a lot of uh, more stuff. So I'm just going to zoom out. So you see? So you can do a lot of things here. Uh, okay, let's take some. Um, yeah, I zoomed in too much. Sets. Yes. Okay, so first of all, uh, the edge mart. Yeah, okay. So we used uh, in the previous example, we had an SFDC, um, what was it, digest, which is uh, getting data from, an, uh, from a custom object or an object. And edge mart is starting from a data set. So we start from this data set playing quota part one, um, and then it's a little bit strange, but they immediately create a new data set um, and they use the same field. So I don't know why they do that, but okay, it's possible. Um, but just know that from an edge mart, uh, an, you use an edge mart when you want to start from a, from a data set. Um, the other things are a compute expression. Um, a compute expression uh, is used to, um, to add a, a column to a data set but a column that is not yet there. So what did they do here? Um, they say, they give, them, they give it a name, uh, they say the, the source, and then they say uh, computed fields, and they added one field, which is unique sort key. If I click this, they decided that the type of the field or the column needs to be text, and then they had a, have a SQL expression. What did they do here? They just um, concatenate, create a date and ID. So I don't know why they, need a unique sort key, but you could use this computed expression to transform your data without um, changing your, uh, yeah, your uh, original data set. Um, so you don't have to create formula fields in Salesforce or something like that. Just do it here if you only need it here. Um, so that's the compute expression. The compute relative is a little bit uh, harder. I don't know if I will be able to explain it uh, well, but, um, this is actually, so in the compute expression is, uh, if you have a, a table of uh, columns, it only looks at the values in that one row of, uh, in that one row of your data. Um, and it's based on the other uh, columns, he creates a new uh, column. Uh, but the compute relative, he looks at uh, other rows, if you get what I mean. Um, and I will keep it at that because, okay. Uh, the filter is also very easy. So here we take input uh, this this uh, node, uh, and then we say a filter. This is actually what did they call it? Uh, expression syntax. It's uh, very exotic, but uh, it just means uh, give me all stages updated equals to one. Uh, you can also do this in SQL, but <laughs> that's also exotic. <laughs> so. Okay, uh, that's filter. Uh, do I have another one? Uh, there's other. There are others, huh? um, but I don't know if I need to find one. No. Okay. So let's leave it at that. Um, yeah, let, let's leave it at that. Um, at the end, uh, we will have what I said. Uh, I'm not going to reach it. Huh? Uh, yeah. Okay. I have one uh, data set, which is a flat table. You remember in the slides, I put uh, index pair uh, table or file, I think, um, where you can uh, easily just in one table um, query all the data. 
I said you could uh, download the JSON. So if you do this, uh, then you will download the JSON. Uh, I will try to click it. Yeah, okay, it just downloads a file. Uh, and then this describes all what you did here. You can upload again uh, if you want to uh, refresh it uh, after a backup or I don't know what. If you do run data flow, which I'm not going to do, uh, it will run this data flow once, but you can also schedule it. Um, and then, yeah, there are all not shuttles. Uh, I guess you do it here, yeah, shuttle, and then you see, yeah, this is basic stuff. So um, now you can do it also event-based. Okay. Um, I need to move on because otherwise I don't make it. Um, that, that's data flows. So then I talked about recipes and I will just create one. Um, recipe, remember, starts from a data set. Uh, so what if I uh, have this data set, which is, uh, I'm going to call it uh, cases uh, demo. And then you get this kind of screen. So this is much more UI friendly uh, than the data flow. Uh, put it here. Uh, what can you do with this? Uh, some basic stuff. Uh, what I saw here in this data set, uh, which uh, blocks me, is that uh, in this column you have the cases. So this is a COVID-19 data set. This was the easiest to find and a lot of people will understand what happens here. Um, this uh, cases is actually the number of people uh, that are uh, confirmed uh, at the specified date. So the 1st of March, we had less than five. Of course, uh, when I uploaded this CSV, uh, and now you will see it later, uh, you have to specify the data type. And he misread that this is, um, a, this is actually a, di a, a diamond, no, a measure. Um, this is actually a measure. So what are we going to do to quickly fix this? And then you will see why recipes are easy. Um, I'm going to create, I can just click here and then I can do uh, to measure. I can do add and he will create a new cases column, which he called cases dimension uh, to measure. And he, yeah, okay. He transformed all my uh, less than five to zero, but um, that's not important. Uh, here, for instance, five, he kept it as five. So I will rename this one to cases original and I will do this one and I'll do the label and I will name it cases. So now I can use this, this, uh, this thing, this column. What can I also do? I can also create a bucket. So um, you see that there's um, uh, a region here, which is here in Dutch and here in French. Um, but if I can create a bucket for it. So if I create a bucket, I can do here, uh, I can put here Flanders because I have other CSVs where they use Flanders. And in this CSV, they use Vlaams Gewest, which is not very easy. So I will uh, do it like this. Yeah. I think Brussels. Now, what do I need to do? Because now it's not going to do anything. Uh, I need to give it the, uh, the possible values to Blaams list, I want it to be uh, Flanders. And then it should auto, uh, auto just Blaams list. Yes. And then Brussels. Like this. Add. And now we create a new column again. Uh, I'm gonna call this region. And now I will be able to map it with my other data sets. Question? No. Okay. Um, yeah, very important. What I'm doing here, you could easily do with a compute expression in a data flow, which is actually, I think, even better. Um, you can also add data here, if I do this, but I'm not going to go further then. Uh, you can add data sets, uh, data from other data sets. So you can combine two data sets. Um, so 
Then I need to end with data flow is for extracting data from Salesforce um, and augmenting, transforming it with other external data. And recipes, that's more of a UI friendly way where you combine multiple data sets and you trans transform uh, some data, uh, but you always start from a data set. Um, okay, so now go back to studio. Um, I don't know if I have still time is uh, half an hour, I think. Yeah? Um, so when I create, uh, let's go and create a new data set. Um, here, I will show you the three ways. So external data is this one. Uh, here you have the op uh, possibility to add con connectors. I, like I said, I never did this, but this is where you find it. Um, and you get sent to the data manager again. Let's go back to the studio. All items. Okay. Uh, quickly show you a data set, how it works for Salesforce data. So I'm going to add it to a new, so let's just call it tests. Add to a new data flow, which I will always also call test. I will do next. This is the data set builder. You see, and you see behind already that there you can find the data flow. Um, I need to first take uh, the contact if I want to add contacts and accounts. Um, you can add relationships here. And here I can add the account, for instance. Um, what I can do then is I can say, uh, I want these fields from accounts and I want these fields from contact. If I now do next, he will input it in uh, uh, create data set. Huh? No, that's not good. Where is it? Okay, doesn't matter. Um, if you, now he built it, the, the data flow for you with the data set builder. Um, of course, if you have very complex, I would advise that you just start with a data flow and you do all of this yourself, because this is actually also just SFD DC digest, augment, and a register. Okay, so that's the data set builder. Uh, we'll go back to studio. And now we'll actually upload some data. Create data sets, CSV file, uh, and we will start with a very simple CSV file which is the tests. Next, uh, I will add it to, doesn't matter actually, uh, I will just call it demo. It uh, doesn't matter where I add it, I think. Okay, so um, this is a very important screen. Here you should validate what are the types of your data uh, columns. So of, obviously he already uh, tries to predict them and he does it okay. Uh, you have three data uh, fields, field types. Uh, you have measure, date, and a dimension. So a date is clear. A dimension is uh, a pick list field uh, in text or something like that, or, or just text actually. Uh, and a measure, that's most of the cases it's numeric where you have, for instance, in this case, the number of tests on a date. Uh, this is all fine. So I will just upload the file. This is only 50 records, so it should be fast. Um, and then when it's finished, we will start with exploring the data sets. Uh, close. Uh, yeah, that's what I needed to do. Uh, I needed to go to data manager because you can monitor uh, the progress here and you didn't see that yet. So here you see, and it's actually today at 7.20, you see that he uploaded uh, the CSV. He actually makes his, his own data flow uh, out of it uh, and it's successful. So uh, if we then go back to all items, all items data sets, you should see, I, uh, I already did that, but this is 7.20, so this is the one. And um, this is when we create a lens with the Explorer. So you double click it and uh, uh, Salesforce create a new lens. Um, 
and this is where you explore the data set. Um, now I need to be careful. Um, what do I need to explain? Uh, yes, uh, you have three table modes. I said it in the slides. You have, uh, you have three modes, sorry. You have the chart mode, the table mode, and the query mode. Uh, if we go to the table mode, you have three. You have three again. But let's take the values table. Then you will see. Uh, and I didn't take all the fields. Let's not take all the fields. Uh, let's take the tests. The where are all the other? Oh yeah. Okay. It only has two. Yeah, it's true. So these are the important ones. Uh, we have a date and then the number of tests. This is how you can easily see what is in your data set. But let's go back to chart mode. Um, what do we need to do? Um, uh, sum of tests, yes. So we take sum of tests. And on the bars, we want to have a date. So it was year, month, and day. So now we have uh, a nice looking chart, but it's not nice enough. So what do we do? We create a timeline. And now you have this. Um, this is basically what you do with lenses and the explorer. Um, you have, um, so this is the button where you can change the charts. Um, so let's do that. This is a line chart, it's pretty similar. Similar. We already had a bar chart. I'm not going to take the other ones, or yes, I could, but not going to make any sense. Uh, a donut maybe. Okay, so now I messed up. So, um, what I can do is I have a history button here, so I can just immediately see what which charts uh, or how do I need to go back. So I can go back here. This was chart to line, but I need a timeline, okay? And then here you can find the formatting. So you have all kinds of formatting. Um, most of it is the same throughout all the charts, only this one uh, changes. So this is specific for this kind of chart. Uh, I'm not going to go too deep into this um, because, yeah, you could easily learn it with a trailhead. Um, then, um, yeah, we need to create a dashboard. So let's create a dashboard like this. I'm going to create a blank dashboard um, quickly, maybe just show you. Um, there are dashboard templates that build that are built by Salesforce. Um, if you uh, yeah, if you take one, you can um, maybe not uh, always use, the, use them. You can, of course, use them. But you can also see how they do things, which is very nice. Uh, but let's not do that. Let's create a blank one. Um, OK. Um, now, the lens. I could save the lens. I can share the lens. I can do, yeah, I can save it. But I don't want to save it. I just want to have it in the dashboard. Uh, what, how do you do that? You click the clip to designer. You have to have an, an open dashboard, uh, otherwise it doesn't work. So if we click clip to designer, I'm gonna give it a name. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, tests by date, call it clip to designer. And now you see in the dashboard, they added not a lens, but a query. Uh, so it's a little bit confusing, but okay. Uh, here you can see all your queries and now you can just drag and drop it here. And then you can uh, try to start designing. Um, if you click, if you click on the chart, you have the same chart options here, so you can start uh, changing. Uh, for instance, the theme is most of the time what I do. So you can give it another theme and then start from there. Uh, blue is dark or something. Uh, you can also do the background color like this, and then it looks a little bit fancy. Okay. Um, next. Um, yes, we can also create queries from here. So then we don't need the lens. If we do this, we create a query. We need to, of course, choose which data sets we want to uh, use. Um, so I'm going to use the uh, cases uh, which I just created, the data set which I just created with the, with the recipe, with the cleaned one. If I double click that, uh, I get same lens uh, view. Um, what do I need to do? Um, yes, you can, of, uh, 
you can again have all the values uh, you want in the table. So let me just make this. So we have the cases and then the case original. We don't need that. We do need the dates. Um, let's do it like this. Cases, dates. Uh, and which one do we also need? All the Dutch ones, the regions. Uh, Yes, update columns. And then you see that actually this is a very small table where you see the number of cases on the date, the yeah, the district, the region, the region again, but then in Dutch, uh, and then the the the, the provincie, I don't know how you say it. Um doesn't matter. So this is how you can just have a quick look on your data. But let's go back to chart mode. Uh, and let's uh, create a nice chart right now. So first of all, I want to do sum of cases. So in total, I have 25K of cases. Um, and then I want to see that on a day chart, uh, again, year, month, day. Uh, this is not nice. So let's use the timeline again. So now I can see that it started in March and then goes up in, in April. Um, but what I also want to see is a region because I created that bucket field. Uh, Steve, and on a quick update on the the questions and on the and on the time too. Yes. Most questions are related to uh, tableau. That's the last one for the end, I think. Uh, on the color, uh, can you pictures the answer is yes you can uh there are color sets that's something maybe for for the end uh too then a question on the integration with sharepoint well integration with sharepoint i don't think it will be uh covered uh right here right and what do they mean with uh integration with sharepoints for the connectors well yeah i think I didn't. I don't know them by heart, but if it's in the connectors list, then it's po probably possible. And otherwise, if it's not, but I think it it will be, um, you could just uh, also do it with CSVs. But that's then. But I think it will be in there. Okay. Thanks. Okay. And time? I don't know actually how much time. It's not not that much. So I'll just continue. So I added the region of the lines and now I can see per region, what is the amount of cases, the sum of cases. Uh, so that's nice. Um, uh, yeah, um, the naming is important. So uh, cases uh, by region, uh, yes. So when I click done right now, it will be here in my queries and I can just drag and drop it here. Same thing. Uh, like this. Uh, what else can I do? So I'm going to create a new query and I'm now I'm going to go to uh, the other uh, uh, data set, which is uh, that. So where we can do some of that, we are going to do the same thing. So we're also going to display the date. Uh, we do a timeline again, and we say region, like this. So done, uh, and I didn't give it a name. And this is why you need to give it a name because otherwise it comes up with this, and then you don't know what it was. So this is that by region. <laughs> And updates, and then I can just drag and drop it here. I can make it, uh, it's not the same, like this. And now I can uh, create a filter. So uh, we put a filter here, we put another filter here. I double click it. Um, this one is for the that, so I will take the region, create, and here I want to take something else. Um, I'm going to take the correct data set. Uh, which one did I need to take? I need to take date, I think, yeah. Uh, yes, date, create. And now when I view this, so this is how you view it. Um, 
Um, when I select Brussels here and I apply, my data set, my chart is updated. When I do this here, uh, last 30 days, apply, my chart is updated. Uh, of course, I want both of the charts updated. So how do you do that? You click here, connect data sources. You click new connection. You say region. You uh, take the first data set, which is the deaths. You say uh, with the region field. Um, and you take the other one, which is Muni cleans, and you say region. And this is how you connect the two fields. Um, close, let's view it. And when I now click Brussels, apply, the both charts uh, adapt. Um, I also want to do this for dates. So let's quickly do that. New connection, date. I choose uh, my that uh, data set, date, cases, date, save, close. If I view now and I want to uh, say last 30 days, apply, both charts uh, adapt. Uh, so this is nice. Um, Now these filters are nice, but um, I don't know. First, I need to show you how we should, how you do an image. So we can also add images to make it uh, look like a real dashboard. Uh, browse files, and then go to, uh, for instance, this one, and then say free to it like this. We can add some text. Uh, like this. I'm going to show you a nicer one later. Uh, I have to go a little bit faster. So, Belgium. Um, or no, let's just look at 19 dashboards. Like this. Uh, I can set the, set, make it bigger. 64, like this. Use this. And this is how you play them uh, with uh, the design. Now these filters are nice. Uh, and then if you do view, you have this. These filters are nice, but it would be way, uh, there's a way cooler uh, approach. If I create a query and I do, um, yeah, it doesn't matter, I think. I do the that uh, thing. And then I do some of, uh, for instance, deaths. And I say, I want to have regions and I take a donut. I now have the amount of deaths per region. So done. What I can now do is I can put it here. And then I should not need the filter. So when I do Brussels, Everything changes. You see, this is way cooler than yeah doing it here in a in a drop down. Um, you can click next to it to reset, or you can click here at the top to reset. You see, um, what is also nice is um, I can give this one. I can rename this page because you can have multiple pages. So if I name this Belgium. I can uh, clone this uh, thing. Uh, and first, let me let me first add navigation like this. Uh, I can clone this one, rename it to world, apply. I'll delete all of these things. Delete only the widgets. I delete everything. And now you can see that, uh, yeah, we have this one still and we have the world. Um, and this is how we, we are going to actually create uh, an app. So let me create a new query. I have another data set, uh, which is called geographic um, distribution, where I'll take the sum of population. Um, and then I'm going to go for a, a map. 
So uh, I'm going to give it the this one. Now we have a nice map where you can see the amounts of people. Um, I didn't give it a name. I'm gonna regret that. Um, now we have a nice map of, um, but I need to do it in, in view, where you can see this is the amount of population per country. You see? Now what will we do? We will create another query. Um, where we will do, yes? Uh, just for sake of time, um, do you still have a lot to show? No, actually, this is the last part. Okay. Uh, or right. I can, yeah, this is, yeah, 10 minutes maybe. Okay, is because it? you're uh, more or less one hour now. Okay. <laughs> that you give maybe just uh, the few uh, last uh, highlights. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, okay, I'll skip this. Um, what I uh, did was I created uh, a dashboard which is called. Uh, let me do it correctly. I go to COVID-19 Belgium dashboards. Uh, which one was it? Uh, I think it's uh, this one. No, it's the other one. Where am I? Yeah, this one. So here I let myself go and um, so I have multiple pages here. I have uh, my filters um, where you can see that you can do, uh, you can filter on region, like I said in the other demo. Um, let's uh, undo that. If you go on region, you can click here again uh, to filter all the regions. Uh, if I go to the general overview, um, you can also uh, filter on uh, sex, so gender. So if I click here and uh, I'm going to highlight all uh, female, that's over time. Um, yeah, you can go endless with it. And this was actually what I was going to build. So uh, here in, for instance, uh, you see the the sum of deaths instead of the population. But if I click now in Spain, this chart here will adapt and it will give me the, the sum of deaths compared to sum of cases. Um, so yeah. But this is how you can play with it. Um, to end, uh, what I didn't say was, and that's what I uh, said at the beginning, uh, it integrates very well with uh, Salesforce, is that if you go to, um, your sales up, you are, you can, you, you are able to embed all your dashboards right here in Salesforce. So that means that your users do not have to go to the studio to view your dashboards. They can just view it in Salesforce. Now, this is actually just, uh, yeah, just them on the homepage, which is uh, nothing, I don't think you need to do that. Um, what I did was uh, on the contacts, um, I created a contact and on the details, I created two fields, region and, and, and gender. Um, you can already see it here. Uh, if you do edit page here, you are able to just uh, drag and drop uh, an Einstein analytics dashboards. In the, in the in the layouts and then set a filter. Uh, so yeah, you just drag and drop this. Uh, but this one here, let's go to the properties. So I just decided that it needs to be this dashboard that's by, by gender and age group, uh, height of 450. And then you have a filter builder where you can see um, he takes the that data set, uh, he names, takes a six field uh, and it needs to be equal to the six field on the contact. Um, if you take this data set, uh, here you have the filter builder, that data set, the region needs to be equal to the contact region, which means that if I, um, or if I am browsing my contacts, I could immediately see those dashboards based on what is filled in uh, in my contacts which is pretty powerful and which is immediately the question of Tableau. Tableau uh, 
is it, it's possible to integrate it into Salesforce, but then yeah, I need to do an iframe and doubt it will be uh, working this nicely uh, together with Salesforce. Um, and this is actually my demo. Um, I could go back to the slides, but I don't think I have a lot. I just have the comparison again, but I think I made my point. Um, here, this is uh, all the links that I used. It's mainly Trailhead, but also some videos. These are uh, nice looking videos. Um, and actually there's a lot of Trailhead badges. It's, uh, there's a lot. Um, there will be too many, uh, but they are really good and they really explain it. And that's, that's how, how I learned it. So, and that's basically it. Thank you. Thank you. Your questions. Well, on the chat, no major extra questions. We briefly talked about the tableau, the visualization. I think we covered pretty much everything. Thank you very much. Uh, message to everyone. If you have some uh, more questions, feel free to send them uh, to us. Yeah. Congratulations. You can contact me on LinkedIn or. Yeah, yeah indeed. Got it for both of us. Uh, pass the mic to. To Michael for the quiz and uh, the prize. Yes, uh, thank you very much, both of you, Jurgen and, and Steven. Uh, sorry that I had to cut you, Steven, at the end. No problem. It became I'm really, really interesting. I noticed you were really going for it. <laughs> yeah. But it was, I think, it was really, really interesting, especially for the, for the people that never saw ice analytics as myself. Uh, really interesting. Thank you. And so we'll share the PowerPoints on our uh, Trailblazer community. Is that okay for both of you? Super. Yep. Um, let's round off before we can go to eat. Um, let's see if I can present my screen again. That will be in my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Where it says quiz. Uh, I had yes. some technical issues uh, just in the nick of time. I got them solved. <laughs> That's good. Uh, so we'll do a little quiz. Uh, it's on a um, on an app that uh, developer evangelist Philip Ozil has created and published. It's open source. So it's based on a developer edition of Salesforce and then a scratch org where you can put in uh, uh, questions and then we can play actually a quiz uh, a bit kahoot like but for free and uh, it's fun for developers because you can do everything with scripts uh, if everything works i had to do it manually during the session <laughs> um so but before we start well, i should go to my powerpoint of course otherwise i cannot go to the next slide Hold on, I'm a bit screwed by Zoom. Yes. So the first prize will be a community sweater, such as this one. So whoever wins will ship this sweater um, as soon as possible. And I saw that everybody more or less uh, used his own name, so that will be good for the for the quiz. Although when you uh, register. You're actually gonna need your phone, so keep your phone handy. You could do it on the on your PC as well, but it's handier on your phone, so keep it handy. Uh, I'll give a QR code to scan, then scan it, and then put in your name, and then we can start. Let's see if we can find that quiz. Here we go. So if you can all scan this one. And then hopefully I will see your names pop up on the screen here. It's a, uh, so yes. I just have a question. So uh, if we are attending this on the phone, mm -hmm. uh, how, how do we scan this? Uh, then it will be a bit difficult. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, can I connect from the computer and then do it? Yes. 
Okay. And then uh, for connecting on the computer is this uh, URL on top. So quizbug.herokuapp.com. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I think we have in the Zoom session now 26 participants, but that's the presenters included. So that would be, well, I'm not going to join the quiz, but I think everybody else can join. So we're actually seeing already 14 players registered. We'll give it one or two minutes more. And of course, I need your real name because otherwise we cannot ship it. I'll please you. There are some easy questions in it. There are some questions in it a bit more difficult for the, the ones that paid attention to the sessions. Don't want to scare you off, but. All right, we're at 21. If somebody still wants to join, but didn't join yet, can that person unmute and shout? Otherwise we start. Okay, it's silence. So I take that as we can start. Yes, let's go. Yes, I just prepare something here for one of the questions. Yeah, all right. Let's go. So it's the same um, as Kahoot. Uh, the first one that does answer the question right gets the most points. Uh, if you answer wrongly, of course, zero points. But the ones that are slower but still answer right get a little bit less points. Let's go. So first question. Where will Dreamforce be organized this year? San Francisco, Las Vegas, virtual or in Brussels? And then I hope technically there are no issues. Looks good. We have 15 that actually voted. Um, so yeah, it will be virtually, of course. Uh, no big meetings with, uh, with Corona, of course. Next question. When will the next admin uh, user group take place? 4th of July, 7th of July, 18th of August, or 27th of September? It was in the mail that you received, so you should have, you could have known. Uh, so indeed, the 7th of July. And the others are actually the sessions after that. So Samuel de Rijk is in the lead, uh, closely followed by Anna Laura and Yazi. Let's hit the next question. So who is the newest Belgian user group co-leader? Is that Jan, Samuel, Sam or myself? That is one of the easier questions, I would say. It's some, of course. Anna Lore is taking the lead. Very nice. Next question. The Clash. To which dreaming event have they got a link to your dreaming? French Touch Dreaming, Dream Olay, or London's Calling? Hope you can hear the song. Because the song is indeed the link. The Clash has a song called London Calling, and that's the link to the very first European Dreaming event, of course, uh, which also did take place this year virtually. And it was actually a nice, a nice one. It was the last day that they were not in lockdown. Uh, you can see the, the, the movies uh, on YouTube, I believe. Anna Laura is. Um, taking the lead a bit stronger now. Next question. How many virtual events did we organize so far? Zero, one, two, or five? We've categorized this as an easy one as well. So of course, it's the very first one. And Anna Lore, very fast on the, uh, on the phone, I believe. And correct. Next question, which character represents Salesforce architects? Is that Root, Astro, Cody, or Cloudy? 
And a tip, it's the only one that is not behind me here. It's indeed Root the Elephant. And I don't have one here at hand. Okay. Oh, Samuel de Rijk is getting closer. Jan and Samuel Moison are also uh, closely following, but anna is still in the lead. Let's have the next question, which is, what is not a feature of the Salesforce Einstein platform? Is that Einstein voice, Einstein vision, Einstein next best action, or Einstein Albert? Yes, and I think that concludes the easy questions. Now we go to a little bit more difficult questions. anna Laura is still in the lead, but very, very closely followed by the two Samuels, actually. So anna Laura, keep your uh, fingers at the, at the butt. Huh? Bit longer questions now. Which three modes are available when you create a lens with the Explorer? Is that pivot table, chart mode, sackle mode? Is that chart mode, compare table, query mode? Chart mode, table mode, query mode. And the last one, I don't have time to read anymore. But that one came from uh, Steven. Uh, apparently four bits know the answer. Samuel Moison actually took the lead. anna Laura is still in second place. And Jan van der Velde is uh, coming up. I believe there are two more questions. So what can you do with data flow? Extract Salesforce object data into analytics, extract data from an external CSV file into analytics, explore a data set, or build a dashboard. It was, Steven, is that correct? The answer, I didn't make mistakes in preparing the quiz. Extract Salesforce objects data into I'm on analytics. Mute. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. You can okay. only extract Salesforce data okay, into but analytics. No, but but nobody scored points with this one. And the next one is also a long question. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to finish in time, but let's see. Let's give it a try. What can you do in a data set recipe? Is that combine data from different data sets, extract external, external data into analytics, build a dashboard, or make a data chili con carne? Obviously not the last one. Uh, and it was combined data from different data sets. And I believe, let's see, that that was the last question. And that makes that Samuel Moison is actually the winner. Big round of applause. Congratulations. <laughs> Jan Thanks. van der Velde closely second. And anne -Laure, just at the last moment, you actually... Uh, well, you're still on the stage, anne -Laure. But uh, the winner is... Samuel Moison, congratulations, Samuel. So we'll send, we'll send this community sweater as soon as possible to your home address. It's a new one. I've never yes. seen it. Yes, yes. Brand new. OK, um, to round up our next events, um, I will see what Corona or what the government allows us to do, whether it's um, in person or virtual, but my guess is we will still do one or two more virtually before we can uh, see each other all together again for a, for a session. So 7th of July, we have planned one. Uh, then the 18th of August, we had planned a summer barbecue. That will depend uh, on whether we can get together because uh, virtually that will be difficult. Uh, but then for sure, 17th of September, there is one on uh, Commerce Cloud as well. And these are the ones from um, the admin user group. But I believe the next one is actually from the developers user group. Samuel or uh, Robin? Yeah, May 12th. May 12th. Around which topic? Um, lightning. Lightning. So... Yeah, visual force to lightning. Uh, All right. So 12th of yes. May is the next one. All right. Um, in the poll, the last question was, are you already registered for your dreaming? And there were actually a few people that uh, said, what is your dreaming? Well, it's one of the uh, nicest dreaming events in Europe. Um, it's a Benelux event. 
normally this year in 2020 was going to be the second time, but uh, due to Corona, we've postponed until the yeah, in January 2021. It will be in Amsterdam and it's a full day with lots of sessions for different uh, audiences, so admins, developers, architects, uh, end users. Uh, and last year, the comment we got from all the attendees was uh, only very positive. So if you didn't uh, get a ticket yet, please go to yourdreaming.eu and uh, get yourself a ticket. It will be really, really worthwhile going there. And that's the last slide that I have. So unless um, my co-leaders have anything else to still add to that, I would all thank you very much. Um, and I would really appreciate if, if you could get, give some feedback on, on how this very first virtual session actually went, what, what worked well for you and, and what maybe we could improve in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.